Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a really great day and as promised this is one of my videos about the NBA Draft. Hopefully by tomorrow I'll have another video out on Anthony Edwards and just whether I think he should have gone number one overall. I don't, and uh, just give my reasons why. But for this video I'm going to be talking about who I think are the biggest steals of the NBA Draft. Enjoy. Starting off I'm going to be talking about Sadiq Bey, who was drafted 19th overall by the Nets and then traded to the Pistons. The 19 year old forward from Villanova was expected to go 12th overall but slipped down to 19th for reasons unknown to me. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the draft class, shooting an outstanding 45% for the season. He's a great two-way player and he showed he's one of the best defensive players in the class. He's physical on defense, which NBA coaches love to have, and he has great lateral quickness to stay in front of his man. Unfortunately, he does have weaknesses like every player, and as a 6'8 small forward, I'd expect him to average more than 5 rebounds a game, which he did at Villanova. And while he had an elite three point shot, his 76% free throw percentage is worse than I expected. But either way, he's a modern style NBA forward and I think he'll have a great career in the NBA. Next up I've got Trey Jones, and at 6'2 he's undersized and part of the reason he slipped so low down in the draft. With his height, it makes him hard for him to transition to the shooting guard position and play off the ball, meaning he can only really play as a true point guard, which is unpopular with a lot of scouts. There are also a lot of other point guards in the draft, which caused him to slip down a few more places I think. However, he really values the ball well, and he limits his turnovers to two a game, which is impressive when he averages almost 35 minutes a game. He always looks to set his teammates up for open shots, and he's shown success in the pick and roll. From his freshman to sophomore season, he showed huge improvement in his three-point shot, going from a below average 26% to an impressive 36%. He also averaged a great 16 points a game in his sophomore season and overall showed a great deal of improvement from one season to the next. Hopefully with him being signed to the Spurs, who are deep in rebuilding at the moment, he should get a lot of minutes and show a lot of improvement as well. And finally I'm going to be talking about RJ Hampton who went 24th overall to the Nuggets and he was originally drafted by the Bucks. One of the reasons I think he slipped all the way down to 24th was because he played in the Australian League and didn't go to a college like most players do. This just caused him to have a lot less exposure and a lot less scouts would be looking at him. And while in Australia he didn't average great numbers, only with 9 points a game, 2.4 assists and 4 rebounds, but at 18 and 19 years old I guess it's not so bad. His main strength was how easily he can get to the basket as he just blows by defenders with ease. His 3 point shot is good enough at around 30% and I'd expect him to be able to improve this a lot, as NBA players often do when they reach the NBA. He's also shown he's great in transition with how quick and athletic he is, allowing him to bring the ball down the court with ease and take it to the basket or find an open man. Although his jump shot isn't amazing, he looks to have the fundamentals to develop it to at least a respectable shooter. Although his jump shot isn't amazing, he looks to have the fundamentals to develop into at least a respectable shooter. And although he won't start at the point guard position, as that will obviously be Jamal Murray still, he should get a lot of minutes playing at the two, as he can switch between the shooting guard position and the point guard position. He'll also be able to get some playoff minutes in with the Nuggets, as he'll hopefully be a solid rotation player for them. So there are all the players I'm going to be talking about for this video, but as mentioned, tomorrow I'll be releasing a video on Anthony Edwards. If there's anyone else in the draft class you think I should make a video on, then just leave a comment and I'll make sure to get it done. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.